What's going on? What's going on? This your boy LJ Brown, and we back with another episode of All BS. That's right. Y'all know how we give it up right here. It's All BS, which is all Bible study, y'all. Don't, don't, don't. Come on, man. Get your get your mind out the gutter. It's all Bible study, y'all. Everything we do, it's all biblically based. It's all Bible centered and things of that nature. So. We excited to be back here with y'all again, man, with all the BS again on your boy LJ Brown. I got my special guest here with me today. And I say special guest because it's my friend, y'all. This is my homie. This is one of my guys. And I'm so excited to be um, here with you today, man, and how you sitting down with us. My man, OJ. Just say what's up to the people, man. I don't know if you got up, something y'all? you want to holler at him. Say nah, I ain't got a whole lot to say. Tell just them about yourself, what you do a little bit or something. I know you world-class traveler and all that. <laughs> you know, we we lucky to have you here this week. We lucky that, you know, you was able to put us on your schedule, you know. Um, but yeah, man, appreciate you having us sit down with us, man. Yeah, man, I'm happy to be here. Uh, thank you for the invite. Yeah. Um, I think this is a, a great opportunity, a great uh, podcast to really touch uh, an area that may not have been touched. Yeah, definitely. You know, so definitely. I'm happy to be here, definitely. and I hope that uh, today that you know somebody will learn something definitely. from what we definitely. talk about. So, man, you already know how we do. We kick in and talk all the time, so we ain't going to try to make this like real formal oh, yeah, or nothing no, like no, that. Man. But we was already, before the cameras and the microphone came on, we was in a conversation about really a myriad of different things um, that was going down, I feel like, right. one particular lane. Um, and really, we was just kind of talking about our generation, right? And how we almost, I ain't going to say almost, we basically then kind of got caught in like this. I don't want to call it hip hop trap. It's the first time I said that. We ain't say that the whole, the whole time. But I don't really call it a hip hop trap. But I will say that, and I told OJ earlier, uh, to the audience, um, that I've always been one of the people who would not admit that hip hop mm. play a part in why our generation is the way it is today. Right. Um, and and because I feel like I'm part of the hip hop culture, you know what I'm saying. I feel like we are hip hop. Like I I think our generation is hip hop. Whether we want to acknowledge it or not, whether you know, no matter how much you dove into hip hop right, or not, like it right. touched you in some kind of way. Like you can't get a right. Like it, hip hop just I think grew beyond what anybody you know Don't imagine imagine anyway. That. So right, I just think it you know it touched us all, man. But I really think, <laughs> like I said earlier. I think it did a number on us, man. Like it really, it it's it changed our mindset. It changed our ultimate goal from what our parents' ultimate goal was, sure. or what some of our maybe not all of our parents, but what I think of a, a majority of our parents' ultimate goal was, you know, you know, get a good job, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, get married, have yep. kids. Yep. Man, live a good life, grow old together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just enjoy life, their right. family life, right? And I think hip hop totally like flipped that like on its head, 360. It went from, you know what I mean, trying to have a good job and get married and raise a family to just get money and really nilly. Yeah. We just outside. Right. We ain't really relationship focused. It's just kind of like You doing what you want to do. Yeah, you do what you want to do. You really do what you want to do. Yeah. Um, we talked about a lack of accountability. No, nobody, you know, you can't tell nobody yeah. anything no more. Like no one can be wrong. Right. How you feel about all that, man? You know, um, just, just, just from your perspective, man. No right, wrong, or indifferent, but just what's your take on that, man? Do you do you think? Um, do you I, do you agree that hip hop kind of did a number on us a little bit? Um, how you feel about just? And how do you feel about just where we are as a generation? Yeah, I I think, and for those who may not know, I come from a music background because okay. I used to produce True. back in the day. So I'm I'm in the thick of it, mm -hmm. right? But I have to agree. I I think, and you know, I came up in a household where my parents were strict. Right. They were about stability. Right. right. Church, mm -hmm. living your you you ain't got to be perfect, absolutely. But but you living in a way that's Christ like, absolutely, as best you can. In line, in line, yeah. You know, so <laughs> you know, growing up into that, that's cool, that's great. You know, that's 
you, you kind of want that, like you said earlier. You Absolutely. want you want that Absolutely. ability in to hindsight. You glad that you had. You it. glad that you had. Yeah. But in that time, in that time, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. And so I think, cause why though? Because outdoors is a monster. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And and see, and I and I've had this conversation with my parents, uh, much older now. Mm -hmm. Right. Y'all left out some important information when I was coming up. A lot of information. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to go so far, I'm cutting you off, but hold your thought. Okay. The previous generation did not tell us the truth, man. They didn't tell us the truth about a lot of different things. Absolutely. They didn't tell us the truth. Absolutely. To your point, they left out a lot of info. Absolutely. Yeah. And and my parents were one of them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, and no, no malintent there. Right. Um, it's just, and I think the times were different back then. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. but in doing that, I, you know, things get missed. And so you go outside of the house. And you find out. And you find out some other stuff that's going on in this world that your mom and daddy might not have, or your family might not have even told Absolutely. you about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so now you got to, you, you hoping you do have a relationship with God because it's going to get tested. Absolutely. Yeah. On, a, on a major level. Definitely. So, and, and hip hop, in my opinion... Uh, played a major role in that. Absolutely. It exposed you to what- It exposed you to that. Family you know? or anybody else may not have been telling you, but like, again, when you grew up, and, and again, in hindsight, we thankful for that mom and daddy that was telling you, Absolutely. come home, be home at this time. Don't at be, that time, you Don't not, be though. doing that. Don't act like that. You can't be- At that time, no. it was like, come on, mama, come uh, on. Well, I gotta like, do man, this. Man, man, everybody out well, there, man. We, everybody, we just hanging out. LJ over there, yeah, I can't so go so over so there with him. I can't yeah. go out with him. You, you, you didn't like it at the time. Right. But in hindsight, yes, you are very um, appreciative. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? For that balance, man. You you definitely, definitely needed that balance. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, and it's it, it's 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 a little bit off topic with the hip hop thing, but it's along the same lines of yeah. not divulging all the information, right? Just about life. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you the other thing that you realize when you get older that you don't really pay too much attention to when you're younger or a child, right? Right. Because you're a child, right? Your life is kind of like. For 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 most of us, it's shelter in a sense. You know Absolutely. who who you around. You know who you grow up with your friends, your right. family. And of course, if you you go to school, once you start getting a little older, you venture out a little bit. But when you that young age, like it's a it's a it's a it's a certain it's a village, right? right. That village that raised you. Right. That we say it takes a village to raise a child, right? You mostly around that village. Excuse right. me. You mostly around that village. But what that what that does is though, you only see people for who they are inside your village. Mm. Right? You don't really see people for who they are once they get outside your village. So like you'll grow up and you'll think that, you know, um somebody that's of grandma age acts like grandma. <laughs> oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no. You 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 understand <laughs> what I'm saying? Like as a child, like oh, you. Man. You you know yeah. just because that's how you grew up that's how you seen somebody of yeah. a grandma statue carry herself or and you think all of them and like you that. think everybody that's of grandma statue is gonna act and behave hey, like baby, grandma hey, how are you doing and that today? ain't true no. you think that everybody that's granddad no. age or uncle so and so age gonna treat you like whatever until you get to the shipyard and <laughs> stick man ain't <laughs> stick man ain't trying to have it although he's sixty five. He ain't trying to listen to what you got to say. Whereas grandpa, he like, okay, babe, son, come in, or, let me talk or, to or you. Anybody. Or, or whoever. So I think that, and and I'm sure it's a fine line of, you know, right. you know that balance and trying to, you know, make sure that your children are prepared and ready for really what's outside. But I think it's, it boils down to a little bit more of the conversation that we was having before the camera come on. It's just, you got to have the realistic conversations, right? Yeah. It's like, they had the conversations with us, but they didn't really have the conversation. It was like, you know, like how we say the birds and the bees oh, or, yeah. you know, it's like, nah, no, don't give me the birds and the bees. Like, go ahead and give me, go ahead and go ahead and give me what I need. Go ahead and let me know. Yeah. I told you, I, t I tell my son, you know, come to, come to me. For whatever you got questions about. Right. And I don't mean just come to me like you come to me as your dad, you know, like, no, 
come to me, bro. Right. About whatever it is that you got on your mind, what you especially thinking about. Especially as a black man. Especially as a black, black, young black man. man. Because I don't want him to be like how we all were. And you know what we do. We asking our homies. We talking with our friends and whoever else. And they lying because they don't know. <laughs> and they ain't going to admit that they ain't <laughs> right. did. Or, you know, and, and half the time you just sitting around the house and you just kicking it. Right. You don't even believe what you're talking about because you're just kicking it with the homies. And if you listen to the homies, then you you they're going to lead you off the cliff. I just be wanting my kids to know, look, daddy going to tell you the truth. Right. No matter how hard it is or what the conversation is, I'm just going to tell you the truth because I want what's best for you. I don't want you out here making the mistakes. I don't want you out here falling in the trap. I'm going to tell you what it really is. What it really is. And, and, and I agree. I, I think... In the, in the time we're living in now, you have to. You have to. That's what, to me, train up a child is. Just so y'all won't think we we sitting here right. and we ain't get y'all no no Bible the whole time. Right. The Bible say train up a child so that when he older, he won't go astray. Right? But how you going to really train it? Like, training them is like, you got to, when you think about when you train somebody. Right. You get somebody on the job training, you can't just give them the... Step one, two, right. you got to go through the whole, you got to give them everything. You can't just, you know, barely touch it. And training them is is popping up at school every now and then to check on you. And training they, is intense. And it's intense. When I think about training, think about a boxer that's training. It's training. No, you, you're going to learn something from this. This ain't run a mill. <laughs> you know, now, now, I can't, you know, I can't talk about everybody else's house. Right. Well, and anyhow, this ain't run a mill over right, here. Right. Hope, I need to know everything that's going on with you. Yeah. Because we live in a society where it ain't, if you're not careful, yeah. Yeah. Something could happen. Absolutely. Whether good, bad, or indifferent. Absolutely. And it's important to, you know, have tough conversations with your children. Yeah. And to build with them and to, you know, I don't really want to study at the table either, but we going to study tonight <laughs> right, because this is important. Now we got to sit down. We got to build some type of, you know. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that's important. Absolutely. And it's because I think what we said earlier, you, you was raised how you was raised, right? So right, let's right. get back to that. We raised how we raised. You know, you're going to church. You know, it's God first always. Right. How you think now in hindsight, like you say, much older, children of your own, how you think it's it's shaped? Um, I mean, not only just how you view life, right? But just you know, as now, just being grown and being a believer at, for yourself, and right. having to walk out things for yourself, and having your own children, and you know what I mean. It's like, how do you think you're you're growing up and having that? God and right, faith right, right. being being instilled in you at an early age. Like, how you think? How do you see it playing playing out for you now today in your own life? Uh, I think. Well, first of all, it, thank you, mom and daddy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for instilling that in me. Let me just throw that in there. Yep. Um, I think it was critical, man. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I'm thinking now, I'm I'm much older now, right. obviously, but in that time frame, it's amazing how what God can do in a certain set of time frame, True. right? Right? You'll look at something and think, oh man, you know, oh, I was this way, or I used to be, or I used to do this, or I used to do that. And then you look back and you like, man, like I ain't even right. You right. know, and 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 I and I and I'll say this, I'll bring you into the picture. You know, we we obviously have known each other mm -hmm. for a while now, and to see even your growth, mm -hmm. it helps me, okay, right? Okay. That that's something that that actually helped me okay. in my walk right. is seeing somebody else's growth right. that right. you know was right. in the same struggle absolutely. as you. Absolutely, absolutely. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's yeah. important. Yeah. Like, and I think that in my later lives, in my later life rather, was was very important to me. Um, and obviously, with your parents. They play a vital role in building you up and making sure that you're good. Um, but I think now, I think just the growth alone has yeah. just really changed my perspective. Yeah. Um, and, you know, church and, and serving and stuff like that. It's I never, let me say it this way, I never would have thought I would be where I'm at right now mm. 
right now. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I never, I, I knew I would have been good because I had a solid foundation right. and, and I grew that relationship. Right, right, right. But I never- but you didn't know what. I ain't, no, I never would have would have thought that. And that's how great God is. That's what he does. You know what that's I mean? That's what he do. The crazy thing is we talk a lot about, you know, you know, God will connect dots and right, he'll make right, things right. happen. And man, but when you when you sit back and really like think about all them dots, bro, like think about all the dots that he didn't connect. Like if he just, if he just, if just for you. Right. Forget everybody else that's just out here you. that he doing. If just for your own self, like anybody, like imagine how many dots. If he Had just, if he just all day just connecting dots just to make what has to happen yeah. for you. Think about how many dots that is. That's a lot. That's of a dots, lot of dots. Bro. And I pride myself on being a person who. I always I think about stuff like that when I'm driving. How many angels did God have to dispatch just to get you here? Just to get you here today. You know, and I ain't even talking about yesterday no, or the right week before here. that. When you was on the way here, just to come now. here to do this. How many angels yeah. did God have to dispatch? How many angels did God have to dispatch at your home at night? Bruh. Cause your next door neighbor got ran in. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and you know, I'm being facetious, yeah. but it, it, this yeah. this stuff happens. Yeah. You know, and if you're not if you're not mindful of it. You know, it can. Yeah. It's 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 this song, man. That it'll says, be daunting. Uh, "What's that song? A million little miracles." Yeah, you know, it's just yeah, like yeah, yeah. miracles on miracles, bro. It's a on million miracles little miracles. miracles. Yep, you can't even count them all. It's it's um, it's it's crazy, man. It it, it really is crazy. Absolutely. Let me ask you, um, uh, running running question. I ask a lot of people, mm -hmm. and. I don't know. I don't know. If, I really don't know if it's because of the season I'm in with the transition of the church and things right, of that right, nature. Right. But I always ask people, how do they see the church right now? How do they how do they feel about church? Not necessarily the mount, but how do you feel about church as a whole? Church as a whole, the body of Christ. Um, mm. I was actually I was in a conversation with somebody a few weeks ago. And um, they were asking me about what what do I think about the next generation in church, or right. you know, church three to five years from now, and right. you know, are people gonna be coming back to church and things of that nature? And um, I'm reminded of another conversation that I had with somebody, and they was like, "Man, like, I don't know if the next generation, like, I don't see the next generation of deacons." Or the next mm. generation of trustees, or the next yeah. generation of it's like so. When I asked the question of, you know, how do you perceive church right now? It's it's. I want to know how people just feel about church. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. so in the next five years, you know, it's like, are we are we come? You know what I mean? Because like, I feel like COVID kind of you know shifted so, us a little right. bit. Yeah. So now you got people that's they come in church, but you know I'm cool with watching it at home too. Um, and everybody got their different reasons. I don't think one is good, right, wrong, or the, right, or the right, other. Right, right, but right, right. how you feel about it, man? Just the whole thing. Yeah, I think. Well, first of all, I you know I come from tambourine in your hand, right, right. <laughs> foot stomping, foot stomping hand clapping, yeah. You know, the sweat flying everywhere from running up and down yeah. the altar. Yeah, you know, yeah. so. Just to see the dynamic of where church is now, I mean, you know, it's obviously God's moving yeah. and doing things. Um, as far as like how just just now, I think, uh, we're, like you said, I, I want to mention something about what you said about mm -hmm. COVID. I, I really think COVID kind of, man, just shifted a whole lot of things, not okay. even just church, but just mm -hmm. how we look at stuff. I agree. You know what I'm saying? I agree. I, I'm somebody sneezing. I'm, I agree. You know, I, now before COVID, I won't even you wouldn't think about won't it. even think about that. Yeah. So it's amazing to see, you know, and, and there, there are churches out there that may have had to close their doors, yeah. you know, which is unfortunate. But um, I think the new church that's out now is is I think God is really making it so that it's no excuse. Okay. And let me let me let me explain what okay. that means. You can access me on your phone. Yeah. 
You can access me on the screen. Wherever you at. You can access me. You want to come, you still want, you old school, you want to come in and, 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 and take your tambourine yeah. to church, you, you can, can do, do that. You can do that too. You can do that too. And so I think what's really happening is God is just expanding his reach True. to a point where that you can't even, you can't it ain't no excuse. You can't get away. Ain't no excuse, you know? And I think, now it's a learning process for a, a lot of churches mm -hmm. that are out there and, and, and trying to, you know, get that, make that step. Yeah. But I really believe that that's what's happening. That's what you're seeing. I like that. Some people can't, some people ain't gonna be able to make the turn, mm -hmm. you know, because they they like, oh no, nah, I you know I come from foot stomping and and, and that's fine because yeah. it may be churches out yeah. there for you for yeah. that. But I think that God is really expanding his, his approach and his reach I to like the point that. that, in my opinion, it, you, you you can't you, get away. Ain't no excuse. I like that. I like, and I'm gonna use the analogy. I'm, I'm gonna stand on your analogy. I think that. When you when you doing that and you saying God is spending his reach and he can't get away, I almost feel like you know how they say you know God he's like he's like a river that oh, flow. Yeah, flow. Uh -huh. It's almost like what he did was during COVID. You know how like a, well, a tsunami or something come, like the water like it pulled back first and then they hit. And I feel yeah. like that's what he did. He yeah. pulled back. He pulled it. He took us out of church. He did all that. He pulled back. Only the now, like how you saying now, when that thing come back through, you can't get away. Ain't and no what way. happened, like when water start, like it could be like let the bathroom Overflow. sink start overflowing right now. Like right. if it run long enough, right, it'll it'll it'll, it'll see, you'll see it on the floor of this whole building. And so I think how you saying, I think that's maybe exactly what he did, man. Yeah. He pulled back, and, and you now, heard and now he he had and what he did when he pulled back was. <laughs> just like with tsunami, a tsunami is pulling back and it's sucking up water, right? Sucking mm -hmm. up water to be able to, you know what I mean? It's Let first it dispersed when it go. Right. So what he did was same thing with COVID. He pulled back and made churches that didn't have technology mm. and ways to stream and That's all good. that. Oh, he yeah. made them now figure out ways to stream and get that word no, out. I'm moving. Y'all need to move with me. So it's me. like he pulled out to right. do exactly what you said. Now, now that stream, right. bro, it's, it just keep going. Like think about something that keep like it. When you right. see that water coming, it don't stop. It just keep going. It keep, and it don't matter how little bit of water. It could be a rush of water. It could be a little teeny little squiggly water. Right. But that thing will keep going, bro. You can't stop it. And, and thing, I think the, that's what he did. And the thing about it is it's alive. Exactly. It ain't dead. So if you you got to get yourself in a posture where, and I was having this conversation with a, with a homeboy of mine because he like, man, I don't know if, it, this is during the COVID time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can handle the stream. But it the stream is just a vehicle. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you got to know that without a shadow of a doubt, if you don't get some kind of, Contact with God, your week gonna be rough, bro. True, very true. <laughs> you know what I'm very saying? Very true. So, I, very you know. true. I and so and so. Here's the thing: the stream is very, very important. I think it's necessary. Yeah. I think that's how ultimately we get the word um, to the masses, right? I Correct. think that's how you know none of us gonna be able to get everywhere. That's right? the new so, word of mouth. Absolutely. Right. So in order to spread God's word throughout the world, we definitely gonna need online and streaming. I think though, and I don't want to try to sound like the old school preacher, you know, or anything like that, but we can't forsake or like we can't throw to the back burner though, or miss the benefit of, let me say that. Right. So that everybody can understand what I'm saying. Right. Let's not miss the benefit of coming in this room. Coming in the room. Absolutely. You know, um, it's like it's like watching the game on TV. Right. And it's dope. But nothing like a, the a, a great experience. You get the you get the up close shot. You can see the the sweat coming off his forehead. Yep. You get the commentators talking to you. You yep. know all oh, what's going on in the game. Watching on TV is is an amazing experience, right. just like streaming online is. And I think that's it, it. You know, streaming has become so good. It's made it comfortable to stream too. It's an mm -hmm. amazing 
online experience. Right. You know, you got the commentators on there. They talking to you. They worship me. They inviting you in. They let you know <laughs> right. everything that's going on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whoever you got leading worship at your specific place of church, worship is they, they ushering you right in. Right. You know, it's an, it's an amazing online experience. But the thing about it is, just like if you at the game, it's something about the energy mm. that's in the room. Absolutely. That you you can't. And I'm gonna be careful when I say it because I have personally myself felt the spirit many a times watching online. Absolutely. But the energy is different. It is different. And in the room. It is it is a it is a very different energy in the room. I think that, you know, I don't know how to put my finger on it, but that 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 warm embrace from God is a little bit different it in is the very room. Different. You know what I'm saying? It's a little bit different in the room. Yeah. You know, I just feel that that oomph. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing about it, like, this the thing. Um God only going to release certain things in a corporate setting at times. True. You know what I'm saying? So like if, you know, let's say you're at home. Mm -hmm. And that don't mean that God can't heal you at home Mm -hmm. because he can. Absolutely. But let's say you show up to church on Sunday and healing gets released in church. Right, 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 right. Now, because you done showed up, you done tapped into something that's going, it's a divine exchange. And not only because you showed up, but because you showed up and this other person showed up because the thing is, healing might not have came in the room because you were there. Correct. Healing might have came in the room because sister so and so was there or brother so and so was there, show up. and you got the benefit of her because you was there today. That, but that 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 goes to what you what you were saying. You can't no. Let's don't not forsake the, the room. Don't forsake the room. You know what I mean? Again, again, it's the gathering of the saints. And I don't want to, you know, to our viewers, I don't want to make it about blessings and healing all that. It ain't about that. Um, but, but it's something that happens when the saints come together and worship. God two or three. The words say two or three. Come together. Then he in the presence. So, you know, yeah, you can get it at home, but... You can't get it at home. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> come on in, cuz. As they say. As they say. Come on in. So. Come on in. Come on in. Man, I think that um I think that's dope. And I think that the, um, we started the conversation off about talking about the new generation. And I think the right. new generation definitely needs to hear that um man, online is good. But bro, get in the room though. See, it's like get in the room. And let's don't make excuses. You know what I'm saying? Um I think, you know, our generation, we, we, we. I'm gonna say our generation of unchurched people. That's good. I ain't, I'm not even gonna say our That's generation because some of us that you, you got to address kinda, it properly. Some of us That's that kind of grew up in church. We grew up in church, and it's what it is. We That's grew good, up in Pastor. church. We know how to navigate it. We know how right. to you know deal with certain things that happen with church right. and that come with church, right? But for me, my passion is the unchurched, right? right. Um, I I have a strong passion for the unchurched. I want I want to get them right. With God, you know what I'm saying. That's, I mean, that's that's all I supposed to be. All I go right. That's what God called us to Absolutely. do. Go out and make disciples, right? Um, so what I would say to the young unchurched generation is, you know, don't don't let what you heard, don't let you know things you've seen stuff that stuff that may even be factual, right? Like. Stuff has happened in church. Absolutely. People that did stuff in church, people that took money, people that, you know what I mean? Like, right. So don't let, though, the factual things that have happened in church, because what we'll try to do is, just like anybody else, we sweep, try to sweep stuff under the rug. Oh, we try to justify, that, or we try to act <laughs> yeah. like, you know, we turn a blind eye, act like right, right, you know right. what I mean? Nah. The church ain't perfect just like nobody else is perfect. Right, and the only reason the church not perfect is because the church is occupied by people. Right, we people. You know what I'm saying? The same people that's in church is the same people that at your job. You know what I'm saying? It's the same people that's at the shipyard. The same people that's at Seven Eleven, which is the same people that's at Food Line. Like we people, right? And Absolutely. so my point is to all the unchurched, you know, 
Don't make excuses. Don't let the stuff that's happened, the stuff that you've seen, the stuff that you heard about, maybe even some real stuff that has happened to you in church. Don't 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 let it stop you from, you know, giving God another chance. I'm not mm. even going to say don't let it stop you from giving another church another chance, but don't let it stop you from giving God another that's chance. Good. That's good. Don't let it stop you from giving God another chance, bro, because like what will happen is You'll find yourself trying to get in church. You'll find yourself trying to grow your relationship with God. And then, yeah, the devil know what time it is. <laughs> and I ain't even trying to put it on the devil, but like, but yeah, like know. Some, but sometimes he no, know what time really it knows. is. He know what time it he is. He know what time it is. And so since he know what time it is, man, he going to throw something your way to kind of try to knock you off your square. Because right. he, ain't, he ain't happy that you even thinking about trying to come back here. So if you watching and you heard this and you like, you know what, man, I might go ahead and try to, you know what I'm saying, check somewhere out. But right then, he don't like that. Now he gonna say, nah, I gotta do something. He gonna show yep. you something or pass it and did such and such or you gonna be scrolling on Instagram and you gonna see pass it so-and-so then did something dumb. And you can say, see right there, I was just getting ready to go. I ain't yep. going, nah. He gonna try to throw you off your square. And that's always in life. But ain't that just like life? You got haters, don't even think about the devil. You just got your regular haters that you always online complaining about, talking about. <laughs> they don't like see yeah. you do good either. It, that's true. And they try to do stuff to knock you off your square. The devil ain't no different. So you mm. can't think it's sweet when you're dealing with church. It ain't sweet. It's sweet with God. God going to do everything he going to do to make sure your life good. And you know what I'm saying? You prosper. It don't mean everything going to be good for you. The Bible tell you, once you get done suffering in, you know, for a little while, so stuff going to happen. But it's going to be all good with God. But if you're trying to make that decision, if you start trying to live right and you start trying to get back in here, man, don't think the devil is going to be happy about that and he ain't going to try to throw you off. Mm-mm-mm. That's just how it go. Yeah, no. Nah, and, and and he, once you have made up, a lot of the times, see, a lot of the times the way he moves is it's thought. Facts. Play with your head. He play with your head. Am I lying? No, you're telling the truth. So if if just like Pastor just said, if if you sitting there and you making a conscious decision and you say, "Hey, I, this is something that I want to move forward and I want to pursue God mm-hmm. and start going to church," mm-hmm. as soon as that thought hit, you should know, like, okay, you know what? I ain't even got time for you today because right, right, right. I know what's going on Absolutely. now. Absolutely, Pastor just told me what's going to happen when he when you do it. We te- we're giving you the blueprint That's right here. This is the blueprint right here. Yeah, you know and. But to the untrained, like, yeah, you got to, you got to make up in your mind where you're at. If you're tired, it's time for something else. Mm. You've been trying all this other stuff. You've been trying social media. You've been trying going to uh, different places to get whatever your fix. Why don't you, God saying, why don't you just give him? One try. Just one try. That's it. That's good. You take one step, all it takes is one step. That's the thing. We don't we don't never want to take that first, first step. step. We don't ever want to take because that's the hardest step you'll ever have to take. Well, I think and, and for the unchurched, right? I think taking the hardest step is they think they ain't <clears throat> they think they ain't good enough yet, right? Right. You think right. you ain't right. We right. always you always hear people saying, man, you know. They trying to wait till they get right. right. Bro, you ain't going to get right. Right. Sis, you ain't going to get right. You still going to wrestle? You ain't going to get right. If you keep waiting until you get right, you ain't going to never come in here. I keep telling people, God want to use you just like how you is right now. Right now. Just like how you is right now. Whatever right you doing, wherever you at, right now watching, he want to use you just like that. Don't wait till you get right. You better come on over here. Don't nobody else want you. Come on over here. <laughs> God want to use you, man. It's like yeah, it's, it's similar to Come plan. On. I mean, like God really do want to use you. He can use you. He wants to use you. And I think the hardest part of taking that first step is we ain't had nobody tell us that no, nah, He can use you now, right now. We think that we gotta you know what I'm saying get cleaned up. We think we gotta you know what I'm saying. No, that's a process. Know, know how to Salvation say amen. Sanctification. Or know when to say amen. Right. When to stand. Oh up yeah. No. And when to clap your hands. No. Man, look, you no, ain't no, gonna. No, ain't, no. Ain't, that ain't on YouTube, bro. No. You gonna learn that when you get in here, and you ain't got to learn it. Clap when you want to clap. The time to clap is when God touch your heart. Absolutely. The time to stand up is when God touch your heart. The time to say hallelujah is when God touch your heart. 
Salvation is a process. You're not going it sanctification, being getting cleaned up, mm-hmm. it's a process. Definitely. It takes time. That stuff not gonna happen overnight. Definitely. But if you get in here, yeah, and God see you in here, he yeah. gonna he gonna step up and do his part. Definitely. Definitely. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every you know, single time. Nobody in this building is perfect except for the Lord God <laughs> Almighty Himself. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? That's what helped me, man. I mean, you know, um, just in, in, in everything that I'm doing, man, like it's a it's a scripture that says, you know, remain who you were when God first called you. Mm, that's good. That's remain good. who you were when God first called you. That's good. To me, that simply means like don't, don't, don't try to act funny now because <laughs> God then called you to something. He done done something for yeah, you. Don't try to right. don't try to be different. Don't try to, oh, now you on, now you on, okay, now you on. And it don't mean you don't grow. It don't mean you don't. That's good. But no, he say, remain who you were when I first called you. Mm-hmm. That's good. It's something about, it's something about the you that he called, right? It's something about, like, that's what that's saying. Remain who you were when I first, when I first called you. Remain mm-hmm. who you were. That's the person he need to use. That's what I'm saying to all the unchurched. It's like, that's he good. wants that you. Like, because... The you that you are before he before you feel like he called you and now you feel like, oh, I got to No, no, no. He needs you to be that you. Cause that's what I taught on it. If you that you, then you'll go places that other people won't go. Absolutely. He need that you. That's why he needs you to be the you that he called. Be that you. Cause if you that you, then you'll be you impactful. Go that, no, listen. See, we always say stuff like, God know my heart, God know me. This oh, is, yeah, 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 that's yeah. It's, it's, that is the 100% truth. Right. He know your heart. Right. He know you. Right. Which is the beautiful part about him wanting to use you. Mm. And that's what I had to reconcile with myself. He know you. Top to bottom. Yeah. Which means if he using you, he, gonna, he wants to use you. That you that he called. Remain as you were when I first called you. So right. as you are... He wants to use you. And what we do is we get called and then we try to get all stiff. We try to get all rigid. And now he can't use. That ain't the you he wanted to use. No, he be wanted, you. He wanted to use. Be you. That you that go to Hooters and watch the game. Right. He want that you. Right. Cause now you not the you that get called and say, oh, I don't go to Hooters and watch the game anymore. That's not the you. <laughs> That's not the you he asking for. He want the you that you were. He called you while you was in Hooters eating the wings. He, you heard him say, tell you, man, I want you to start. He did that to you while you was in Hooters. <laughs> so what make you think that nigga you got caught in that hill want you in Hooters no more? Yeah, no, I want to work on you. Go to Hooters and, 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 uh, and talk to Bob that's next to you next time you get I'm in I'm going to work on you so when you go back to Hooters, you can work on Bob and John. And now Bob and John, I'm working on them. <laughs> connecting the dots, like we said earlier. You gotta connect the dots. You gotta connect the dots. But that's why, but see, until you know that, that's what we don't understand that God can't use you. Right. Yeah. He ain't saying, that's come, good. He ain't saying come in here and change right away. You that's can't. Good, Pastor. That's good. Because everything we telling people to change ain't biblical. Some stuff we telling them to change, you want them to change because God convicted you on the change. The Bible didn't say it. Right. Right. God can tell you something, but not tell me. Right. And that means you gotta adhere to that, not me. Right. And I shouldn't be forcing and that you, on you. Because of something that he told you. Right. But that's what we that's do. Good. And then that's why we got people that feel like they can't come in and be used or do anything in the church or be used by God because you done told me I can't do shot, dot, 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 dot. But the Bible don't even say that. That's just the conviction that the, the relationship that you and God had, right. that's what he spelled out to you. Or, or that's something that, it, you know, your particular church you go to, that's what they're doing over there. Or your background, your experiences, your whatever, like all that comes into play with why right. God may say, hey, man, you might want to ease up on this, ease up on right. that. Maybe, okay, this could... It's all based upon, again, the relationship. And we right. get confused in it thinking that all of our relationship with God is the same. My relationship ain't the same as your relationship with God. No, which is why he handle and deal with us differently. That's good. And so we just got to let everybody know that God can use you. In fact, he wants to use you, the real you that he called. Because if you're that you, 
Think about how much more he can get done. We so busy right. all wanting to be the same. We got to have button up the shirt, whether or not we don't do this, we don't do that. We got to go. Who, like, how, how, who are we really talking to? That's why we just keep switching the same people. That's why we don't get no new people. Because cause then everybody, yeah. the unchurched ain't. And, so, and so he needs you to be exactly who you are. He needs me to be exactly who I am. Like, that way he can reach more people. Ain't God everywhere? Because we all doing different stuff. Ain't God everywhere? God everywhere. So don't he need people? He, he gonna need people to talk to somebody in Hooter. He gonna need people. Or how? Or, or, or how do you get them? And, and, you know, it ain't even got to be about that. But I'm just saying. How do you get them? How do you get them? Somebody em? gotta be wherever they at. Grocery Hooters store. Or wherever. Exactly. It don't matter. School. Somebody gotta get them. Somebody em. gotta get them. Cause he everywhere. One thing I know, he everywhere. And what we have to realize in the church is, they not just coming to us. Mm. See, we wait. See, we we not going where they are, but we get mad at them for not coming to where we are. Oh man, that's good. You see what I'm saying? No, that's so good. So we're we're not by saying that's true. Oh, you ought not be over there, you ought not right. be over here. And right. Yada yada. We not on going to where they are. Then they, they start t- telling you man. it's gimmick this, it's gimmick that, you're trying to do this, yada yada yada. That's so so true. we not going to where they are. But then we complain when they don't come to where we are. And the bottom line is they have proven, time has, has proven that they ain't just coming because we having service. Right. They're not coming. <laughs> you can have all the service you want. <laughs> you can, you can, you know, mm. you can have all the conference you want. You can have all the, you know, whatever. They ain't coming. No. They ain't coming. No. They ain't coming. You can have many revivals. You can. Oh, only God. people coming in there is people from your church or people from the church down the street or wherever. You're yeah. not getting no outside people coming. So yeah. instead of complaining and knocking about them not coming, we coming to y'all. We coming to y'all. We can be in Hoover. We can be in the club. I told them I want to go to the club <laughs> one night. I want to go to the club one night, OJ. Yeah. Just go to the club, party one night, have a good time. Turn a real good down. time. Get the session. You know how we do. Right. Absolutely. But then at the end of the night, I just want the opportunity to give everybody a chance to accept Jesus. Right. Right? Right there. In the club. Because to my point, they ain't not coming where we at. They're not. And the devil know that. So he trying to keep them away. They ain't coming. They ain't coming. So let's go to them. Let's, let's, let's bring it to them. And don't be uptight. No, we're gonna go in there and we're gonna have a good time. I'm not going, I don't wanna go in there at the end of the night just for that. <laughs> what they can see, oh You're man. The, preach, the preacher the just come in here. Benediction. He just come in here in two seconds and he just wanna. He give him the bill, the call, the no, discipleship. No, 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 no. I want y'all to see me having a good time with y'all all night. Right, right. We right. had a good time all night. Right. In fact, y'all probably was wondering why I was here with you all night. So, right. So, well, now, now that you, you got know. these questions. Now you know. Come on over here. Accept Jesus. If you want to accept Jesus, text accept the seven one four four one. Right. I know. Isn't I know. And you see, some people they ain't gonna be able to grasp that. They can't. You know. Because we complain about Everything. going where they are. Yep. But then we complain about them not coming to where we are. And all I'm saying is, like I said, my passion is going after that unchurched, bro. We got to we gotta go after that. We, yeah. we That's that's what we called to. Yeah. We called to make these disciples. It shift. And, man, you know, we, we started off the conversation just about talking about how hip-hop did a number on us. <clears throat> and it did. Hip-hop really did a number on us, bro. But, man, I want to see that change, man, from, from right. my generation. You know, I want to see my counterparts. I want to see... My generation, man, um, have a relationship with God, man. You know, I think a that- A legit one, yeah. You no, know, a real relationship with God. And right. I think that for whatever reason, um, I don't think we I don't think we as strong. I don't think our relationship is as, as a whole. Why do you think that? I don't know why we at where we at. Right. I don't know. It's, it's I, tough know, to gauge I don't know. That, you, you know, know I ain't gonna sit here and start trying to. Right. <laughs> I be throwing blame. I be throwing blame everywhere. Right, right, right. So I don't, I don't know why we. I don't know why we are where we are. But honestly, I think that I don't think we as close. I don't think we. And and maybe, maybe 
it could be a little bit of what we said earlier. Maybe the previous generation won't won't all the way true for us. Maybe they won't right. as close as we assumed as we they thought were. They were right, right, right. So I don't know if that's the case either. So maybe I'm looking at see our generation also more honest, and we portray we don't hide. We do what we do. I ain't hide and I ain't. So it it will it will it will appear to it will appear that we're not as close. Cause we don't hide what we do. We don't. We don't. We yeah. outside. We move here. We do this. Back in the day, you hear. Everything. Back in the day, eh, <laughs> you ain't really know what. Uh, don't, you don't day, know what you know, I got going on. You don't know what's going on. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. So right. maybe it appears that way because, again, I, you know, we know what they let us know. Mm. So maybe, maybe we thought they were closer to God than what they really were, and they and, might not and, have been. Which is which could be why we ain't as close as. We said, you know what I'm saying? Because they right. really won't ask close. Right. I don't know. We don't know. I don't know. But just where I am now and what I've, what I've seen, mm. I don't think that we are as close as the, the previous generation, man. And I want to do something about it, personally. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I want to do something about it. Um, I, like I said, I want to see there's my a, counterparts. A need. A I want to see my counterparts in church, bro. I want to see my counterparts have a real relationship with God. I want to see the people that I That's grew good. up with, the people that I went to school with. That's good. I like I got faces in my in my mind. I know they ain't maybe never been or maybe been, but I ain't seen. Or don't want to. But don't I want to go. You know what I mean? Nah, I want to see like I want to see that take place, man. And so, you know, I'm I'm willing to do you know whatever we got to do. I want to make church cool. And I know church people don't like. Saying oh, cool, boy. it ain't. Hey, it ain't. Hold, hold, well, here's hold, the thing, me, right? That's a sin. It's a let me, sin. Let me cover my ears now. And it's not. I don't mean cool in sense of like fat, but like cool in a sense like I gotta come to church. It's Sunday, like yeah. like you could still go to brunch, but you gotta go to church first. Right. Like like I want that to be a thing. Like no, I I, I gotta come here and I, I I gotta go to church. I got to. No different than you know how you working out like you. It, it don't, you don't like it when you start, but you'll get to a point where, man, I got to run. I don't care where I'm at. I, I can be gone. It. I can be out of town. Like, I don't, my body don't feel right. I got to do I, it. I, I, like, I got to run. I got to put it in my day. And then it shift to, I want to do I it. I have, I need, I got to do it. I want to do so it. So I need, I, I want to make church back like that. Like, for our parents, Sunday. Oh, no, you going to church? Bro, you going to church. And then you going <laughs> to second going to service. Church. And then you going to the yeah. afternoon. That was their thing. And we going to break bread. That was but thing. you going to church. So I'm just saying, I want to make Sundays for church again. Sundays ain't don't belong to church no more. Sundays belong to the NFL. Mm. Sundays belong to, you know, Brunch with, with the, you know, with Guava the, 7. Yeah. I don't want to call no one. <laughs> nah, don't sorry, call sorry. Y'all. I mess with all y'all. No, nah, we love y'all. But, don't call them out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bay Local, I do that to y'all. Sundays belong <laughs> to Bay Local and all that. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. right. Sundays don't belong to God no more. That's good, man. Ain't nothing wrong with Bay Local and all the brunch spots. Shout all y'all out. But we gotta hit church first. That's all I'm saying. Let's just hit, let's just, let's just get God his first. And then we can yeah. still hit brunch. Cause I'm all about brunch. I got my hit brunch. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Ain't nothing Absolutely. wrong with it. We just gotta make keep the main thing the main thing. All right. Listen. You good with that? I'm absolutely good with that. You got anything else for the people, man, before we wrap up? No, I I just think, um, I think. It's just important to get here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I don't I don't necessarily want you to get here just because I'm telling you to get here. Right, right, right. Like you need to be here. You need to be here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and it's good for you. Mm-hmm. Like it's easy to, you know say something about something that you don't know nothing about. <laughs> right. Let me say that again. Yeah. Do you, do you, yeah. It's easy to say something about something you don't, don't know nothing know about. about. So you got so-and-so telling you about a particular church or whatever, mm-hmm. and you don't know nothing about No. Yeah. Get come on here. In come, come here. We ain't telling you. You ain't got to be here, but just here is the church. Get in the, the room. The God. Get in the room with God. Get in the room. That's it. That's it right there, y'all. That's the more. That's the wrap up. Get in the room, y'all. The Don't room. let nothing keep you from being in the room. The word said, remain as you were when God first called you. All of us got a calling. Don't worry about changing. Don't worry about trying to be perfect. Just come on 
in the room, y'all. Appreciate y'all hanging out with us and kicking it with us, man. We'll see y'all next time. I'm gone.